While some stores are rationing rice, others are looking at record profits. Luxury items from Rolls Royces to fine jewelry are selling as well as ever. Our Lena Cho shows us how some people are still flying high in a down economy. Entrepreneur Paul Palmer says he doesn't feel any turbulence up here in his private jet or on the ground. Same is true for money. Same is true for money. You're right. Hi, welcome to my house. Palmer belongs to a small elite club, the ultra rich. Unlike millions of Americans hit by skyrocketing fuel and food prices, the wealthy are snapping up high priced cars, homes, and jewelry. This seems counterintuitive. What's going on? These people are not hurt, and to the extent that they are hurt, they're down to their last 50 million. A new study by the Harrison Group says the wealthiest 10% of Americans accounts for more than half of all U.S. consumer spending. The luxury market is not only booming, in some cases, it's setting records. Take real estate. 71 Manhattan apartments worth at least $10 million sold so far this year. That's compared to 17 in all of last year. Foreign buyers are helping, taking advantage of the weak dollar. But the richest Americans are also in the market for what they believe is a good deal. And I wish we had more of them to sell. This part of the market is basically recession-proof. Fine jeweler Farayana Manella's business has never been better. Everything is selling, even with sticker shock prices, like this $180,000 necklace and $65,000 matching earrings. It really doesn't surprise us, right? Yeah, it's true. I mean, we travel around the country and we see in our stores everything that is high ticket is selling out. That includes smaller communities like Fresno, California, where there is still an appetite for everything from designer handbags to Jaguars to million dollar homes. Back to Parmer, he owns five homes in three countries, a dozen cars, three jets, and says he'll keep spending without looking at the price. What recession? Yeah, what recession? Well, not so fast. To be clear, the super rich only make a, up a very small slice of the overall economic pie. The overall economy, as we've been reporting, is hurting. And as one expert put it, you can't just have consumer spending at the top end. You need it at the little shop on the corner, too. And when that happens, perhaps we will see signs of a recovery cure. But it's just uh, incredible. Remember, as Ali was pointing out earlier to me, uh, you know, this is just a fraction of 1% of the population, but it's an influential uh, fraction. Action. They're spending a lot of money. Uh, some people call them the gas that makes the economy go, but it's mind boggling. $180,000 necklaces, though? I, 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 yeah, I mean, they're peep, they can't make enough of them. You know, $27,000 gold cuffs, and it's, it's really linked to the price of gold. They say they have to go in and mark up their prices every couple of months. So uh, these uh, women or their husbands who are buying this jewelry say, if we, to a certain extent, if you have the money, if we don't buy it now, the price is only going up. So that's his approach. That's, that's how the, he's... That, that's how the jewelers are making money. Yeah, it, it's incredible, but it's mind-boggling. Eighty-four million dollars for a Palm Beach estate, um, just nice recently sold. Nice lifestyle if yeah. you can get it. Yeah, yeah. Nice I tell you, Alina looked pretty uh, good uh, flying in that private jet. I well, know. She sits it's not hard to get comfortable the problem in a is private it's, jet. <laughs> it's going to be a little harder to, to get on a private jet right now, or at least a semi-private jet. You know, there were this. You just mentioned this, Kira, a few minutes ago. There's one area of the retail market that is not struggling. In fact, far from it, CNN's Alina Cho explains that when the going gets tough, the smart spend money. Entrepreneur Paul Palmer says he doesn't feel any turbulence up here in his private jet or on the ground. Same is true for money. Same is true for money. You're right. Hi, welcome to my house. Palmer belongs to a small elite club, the ultra rich. Unlike millions of Americans hit by skyrocketing fuel and food prices, the wealthy are snapping up high-priced cars, homes, and jewelry. This seems counterintuitive. What's going on? These people are not hurt, and to the extent that they are hurt, they're down to their last 50 million. A new study by the Harrison Group says the wealthiest 10% of Americans accounts for more than half of all U.S. consumer spending. The luxury market is not only booming, in some cases, it's setting records. Take real estate. 71 Manhattan apartments worth at least $10 million sold so far this year. That's compared to 17 in all of last year. Foreign buyers are helping, 
taking advantage of the weak dollar. But the richest Americans are also in the market for what they believe is a good deal. And I wish we had more of them to sell. This part of the market is basically recession proof. Fine jeweler Farayana Manella's business has never been better. Everything is selling, even with sticker shock prices, like this $180,000 necklace and $65,000 matching earrings. It really doesn't surprise us, right? Yeah, it's true. I mean, we travel around the country and we see in our stores everything that is high ticket is selling out. That includes smaller communities like Fresno, California, where there is still an appetite for everything from designer handbags to Jaguars to million dollar homes. Back to Parmer, he owns five homes in three countries, a dozen cars, three jets, and says he'll keep spending without looking at the price. What recession? Yeah, what recession? Well, not so fast. To be clear, the super rich only make up a very small slice of the economic pie. The overall economy is hurting, as we've been reporting. And as one expert put it, you can't just have consumer spending at the high end. You need it at the little shop on the corner, too, Ali. And only then will we see some signs of a recovery. Now, the good thing is all these people, these fancy homes, uh, do pay property taxes. So where we see foreclosures, at least, hopefully that helps make up for it. But that gap between the super rich and the average or the not so rich is, has been increasing. Yeah, listen, as the New York Times put it this uh, this weekend, uh, more pasta, less red meat, yeah. more movie rentals, fewer movie tickets. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a, sort of an accurate picture of what's going on here. Yes, as you mentioned, uh, what's interesting about this current economic climate is the gap is widening, not just between the rich and the poor, but between the super rich and, and the merely and rich. And the merely rich. Imagine that. What a problem to have. <laughs> Alina, thanks so much. You Alina Chow. Terry. That little store on the corner is Walmart. Walmart, yeah, no small thing there.